What's up everybody, it's Man of Low Moral Fiber here. My name's Luke, and today we're gonna to be taking a second look at the Pitchfork as a part of my Does It Suck series. The Pitchfork is the legendary doll sniper. It is available most commonly from Terramorphous. And like many other weapons, it received a significant boost as a part of the community patch, which is why we're taking a second look at it here. On the card, we can see that it's obviously got burst fire while zoomed. We would expect that because it is a doll weapon, and it also consumes two ammo per shot. It has the red text, Mainstreamed. So if we compare this to a regular doll sniper here in the unpatched version, we can see that it does have a little bit lower base damage, but it has a higher magazine size. Obviously both of them burst fire while zoomed, but the Pitchfork has the special ability of having four unlisted projectiles. So these projectiles remain a constant distance apart. I used to think that they got a little bit closer as it went further away, because it kind of looks like that when it comes out of the scope, but that's just a difference in perspective. Whether you're shooting across the room or just right here, the spread remains pretty constant every single time. And so this weapon does allow you to put quite a few rounds on target if you use the burst. With a doll grip, I believe it has a five round burst, and with every shot costing you two rounds of ammunition, that uses up 10 of your ammo. Being that sniper ammo capacity is only 132 if magazine size wasn't a limiting factor, and I guess it's not if you reload after every other shot, 14 trigger pulls could exhaust your entire magazine size if you were aiming down sights, or your entire ammo capacity, rather. So, because of that, this weapon was pretty potent. It could definitely kill things, but it was very, very difficult to use because of its extremely limited ammo capacity. We'll run a test here against the first enemy in Washburn Refinery, and then we'll apply the patch and see if the weapon does any different for us. So, we'll go ahead and shoot him, I guess, right here. You can see that that took off both arms, so this weapon can definitely be an effective loader killer because it targets you know, both their arms and their eye at the same time. So it's not as if this weapon had an extremely long time to kill, it's just that it used an extremely high amount of ammunition. Let's go ahead and apply the patch real quick. And so the pitchfork, unlike some guns, wasn't touched too much. Um, I'm not trying to say that some guns were touched too much. I'm saying that the pitchfork had a very, very small adjustment, a very, very minor adjustment. You can see that all of the cards or all the stats on the card are the same, except it no longer says it consumes two ammo per shot. So compared to a gemstone sniper now, which did get a boost, it does significantly less damage per shot but obviously you're getting those four unlisted projectiles, which might be extremely helpful against some enemies like loaders. In addition, because it only uses one ammo per shot, the magazine size effectively got a ton deeper, giving you more burst per mags, which is definitely going to increase the DPS of this weapon quite a bit. And also, since it's a lot more ammo friendly now, I think that this weapon's main problem, which is ammo consumption, is no longer going to be such a limiting factor for the weapon. Now this weapon has always got um, unlisted projectile boost with the B shield, but then again so did the best two snipers in the game, so you couldn't really list that as a unique ability for the pitchfork because this weapon did it so much better. Regardless, let's go ahead and kill this guy. Alright, so killed him in, you know, two bursts there, that is quicker. So, I don't know what happened there as far as why it killed so much quicker because the base damage wasn't affected, but oh well. Weapon seems to be excellent with boar because you're throwing so many projectiles out there, um, and that's always good. Every skill of zeros that you can leverage, you know, definitely makes a weapon a lot better, and boar is one of his best skills, so. <laughs> Anytime a weapon's good with that, it's definitely advantage on zero. All right. So we're getting wrecked by that dude way over there. The weapon shouldn't have any problem at range because obviously those, you know, pellets stay at a constant spread. So no matter how far an enemy is, we should be able to hit multiple critical hits on him with the uh, pitchfork, assuming he's a loader. If it's going to be a humanoid enemy, this weapon might have a little bit more trouble. That spread's not going to be as useful. I could definitely imagine it being useful against uh, certain enemies like Skag and other wildlife, though. Whose critical hits move around quite a bit, and so this widespread gives you a little bit of margin of error. 
definitely, you know, still have to keep an eye on your ammo with the wasted bullets coming out of a burst after destroying an enemy. So you can definitely limit the burst size with a doll weapon by releasing the aim down sights button. Or you could always hit fire it with zero skill at one with the gun. The weapon is still going to remain accurate even if you're hip firing. You can see that there. Cool. With a legendary sniper comm, it is not too difficult to limit the burst size of this weapon. And so that's really nice. You could always, um, when using this weapon, leverage a stockpile relic instead of a Bone of the Ancients for an increased ammo capacity. But obviously you lose a little bit of your corrosive damage or elemental damage then. And you also lose what I think to be an extremely effective bonus for zero, which is the cooldown bonus. So that's why, unless you're stacking Critical Ascension, you probably want to be using a Bone of the Ancients almost all the time. Definitely the best relic in the game for Zero, as far as I'm concerned. I wish there was a non-elemental version. Definitely would give Jacob's weapons a boost. I understand that there is one, apparently, for um, modding, but it doesn't work quite as easily as I would like. I don't want any mods that require a ton of attention. You can see there that as we're working up Critical Ascension, it's going to absolutely wreck dudes at this point. You're putting out five pretty high base damage rounds, and they're all getting that Critical Ascension boost. So when you get two critical hits on an enemy at once, that is, <laughs> that's effective, you know. <laughs> um, there's no doubt about that. I don't think we can get two stacks of critical ascension from one trigger, or I guess we could from one trigger pull if we're aiming down sights, but from one set of pellets, I don't think we can get two stacks of critical ascension. Yeah, it looks like just one. Cool. Cool gonna go a little bit aggressive on these dudes see if the uh, pitchforks firepower can get me out of this here I didn't realize I was out of grenades I guess there aren't that many enemies for me to work through <laughs> I think I bored through that one dude way back there and killed him that was awesome all right cool this weapon is definitely potent now is it as good as the Lyuda probably not but I wasn't expecting it to be but they took this weapons main weakness and you know didn't make it go away, you still have to limit your burst capacity to keep a super good eye on your ammo, but it's not like it was before, and because they cut down the, uh, you know, ammo cost and didn't adjust the magazine size, this weapon now has a very, very deep magazine size. It's definitely the best doll sniper before, which I honestly didn't consider it to be beforehand, so that's pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah, this weapon is really good. I might have to farm for one of these on um, probably just a corrosive variant, but on my legitimate zero, farming for a corrosive pimp or pitchfork might be cool. Um, just to have another weapon, more variety in the backpack, especially since I have more backpack size now. This weapon definitely doesn't suck. I actually find it quite fun to use. It gives another, you know, high tier sniper. It's hard to put anything in the same tier as the Pimpernel and the Lyuda because. I mean, <laughs> those are so far ahead of the rest of the snipers, it seems. But, this is a good weapon. There's no doubt about that. Once you have that amount of critical ascension, and you can aim at either the eye and get multiple critical hits, or aim at the right shoulder, or I guess it's their left shoulder. Stage right. <laughs> you know, aim your right side, hit their shoulder. You're also going to hit their eye, too. It's almost like, uh, I wouldn't say guaranteed, but at least a good chance at multiple critical hits, which is pretty cool. Alright, I'll aim for his crotch now that, uh, yeah, that, that's a potent weapon, there's no doubt about that. I actually quite like this. I just wanted to blow those up because... <laughs> <laughs> I don't have very much health and I don't want to die. So if this guy somehow does back me up, I wanted to uh I wanted to be okay. Doesn't look like he's gonna be able to do that. Cool. So we'll get one more shot on this guy. And that's that. The Washburn refinery, you know, falls pretty easily to most snipers, but to the pitchfork it seems to be especially vulnerable because all 
all of its enemies are, you know, weak to the pitchfork and its particular spread. So the pitchfork's definitely going to be a very solid weapon against loaders. Um, I think some other enemies might not benefit from its pattern quite as much. I would say some wildlife where it moves around, you could definitely have a higher chance to hit critical hits with this weapon. So this weapon probably doesn't excel against humanoid enemies too much, though. Against loaders, it definitely seems to be pretty fun. And obviously, like I said, it has the unlisted projectile bonus with the B. The pitchfork definitely does not suck now. It didn't really suck beforehand. It just sucked to use it with the small ammo capacity. Now that its ammo usage has been severely mitigated, this is a pretty high tier sniper. I'd say it's definitely one of the best ones, probably a contender for the three to five range. Still he heavily separated from one and two though, but it's up there. This is a good sniper now. As always, guys, I thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you haven't yet taken the time to subscribe, please do so. Otherwise, I do hope to catch you next time. Bye, guys.